everyone and welcome back to our series Everything You Need to Know as a board member or economist in a central bank with a state-of-the-art F-Pass Mark II framework. I'm Anahit Jaloyan, a Level 1 student at the Global Forecasting School and an economist at the Central Bank of Armenia. In our last episode, we covered foundational principles around predictability, transparency and risk management with Narek Kazarian. Today, we're building on those ideas and going even deeper into core economic methodology and the importance of understanding causation. I'm joined by Levon Sahakian, another board member here at the Central Bank of Armenia. Levon, thank you for being here. Thank you, Anahit. It's great to be part of this discussion and to delve into these essential principles. To start, let's talk about something our advisor Robert Ford shared at GFS. He mentioned that the best of the best economists are always questioning why they're doing what they're doing, while others can often get lost in the details. Levon, why is this mindset so important, especially for economists and central bankers? That's a great question, Anahit. The mindset of continuously asking why is vital because it keeps economists focused on the broader purpose of their work. The best economists don't just dive into technical details, they connect those details back to the larger objectives they're aiming to achieve. This approach prevents them from getting bogged down or overwhelmed and ensures they're always making meaningful contributions. On the other hand, economists who don't have this sense of purpose can get lost in the complexity, becoming frustrated or losing sight of the impact their work is supposed to have. This is particularly important in central banking where the implications of every decision can ripple through the economy. That's a powerful perspective. Another fundamental concept for central bankers is understanding causation. Could you explain the difference between proximate and fundamental causes and why it matters in our analysis? Absolutely, Anahit. In economics, it's crucial to differentiate between proximate causes and fundamental causes. A proximate cause is something that directly triggers an outcome. For example, an oil price shock can be a proximate cause of increased transportation costs. But it's often a fundamental cause, like weaknesses in policy frameworks, that allows inflation to persist. Take the 1970s, for example. We saw high inflation rates, and many attributed this solely to oil price shocks. But the reality was that central banks at the time lacked strong frameworks to manage inflation expectations effectively. Without a well-anchored policy response, inflation persisted far beyond the initial shock. Understanding this distinction helps us create more resilient policy frameworks that address root issues, not just symptoms. So, the idea is that while proximate causes are often the triggers, it's the fundamental causes that create the conditions for these issues to persist. How does this connect with econometric modeling? and some of the pitfalls economists faced in the past. That's exactly right. Econometric modeling has historically focused on capturing proximate causes, which is helpful but has limitations. In the 1970s, for instance, many central banks relied heavily on reduced form econometric models that fit historical data without always capturing the underlying economic mechanisms. One critical gap was an inadequate understanding of the Phillips curve, the relationship between unemployment and inflation. Policymakers assumed a stable trade-off, but they didn't account for how inflation expectations could shift. Without this understanding, central banks struggled to control inflation effectively, leading to prolonged economic instability. It sounds like they were focused on short-term predictions without a clear framework for the bigger picture. How does the GFS program help address these methodological challenges today? At GFS, we emphasize a framework-based approach rather than relying solely on econometric models. We teach students to understand the limitations of each tool and to think critically about the assumptions behind each model. It's about connecting theory and practice always questioning whether a model aligns with economic reality. One of the key aspects we focus on is scenario-based analysis. Instead of relying on a single baseline forecast, we assess multiple scenarios to better prepare for a range of potential outcomes. This approach, which is integral to FPAS Mark II, enables us to manage uncertainty more effectively and avoid the kind of rigid thinking that caused issues in the past. That sounds like a much more adaptable approach. To wrap up, what advice would you give to new economists just entering this field? 
My advice would be to cultivate curiosity and always ask why. Don't lose sight of the broader purpose behind each analysis or model. Economics is a powerful tool, but only if it's grounded in a clear sense of purpose and a willingness to learn from both successes and mistakes. Thank you, Levon, for those valuable insights. And before we finish, I'd like to remind our listeners about the Better Policy Project scholarships for the GFS program. Two annual scholarships are available covering the program fee. This is a great opportunity for students committed to advancing their skills in economic policy. Applications are reviewed monthly with an interview and testing process to ensure candidates are suited to our dynamic learning environment. Thank you, Anahit. I encourage anyone passionate about policy and economic research to consider GFS. It's an invaluable experience for anyone serious about making a difference in policy work. Thank you again, Levon, for joining us today. And to our listeners, if you'd like to support the Better Policy Project and the Global Forecasting School's mission to improve economic and financial literacy, please subscribe to this podcast and hit the like button. Join us next time as we continue this series with even more foundational insights. Thank you all and see you next time.